Ben Jacobson here with another Ben Jacobson camera review. Uh, this is a bit of camera and lens review. Uh, in front of me today, I have the Panasonic Luminix GX1 with the Panasonic 20mm uh, 1.7 pancake lens and the Olympus EPM2 with their 17mm 1.8 uh, non pancake lens. It's it's a traditional lens design. You'll see the difference real apparent right there. Um, this is makes some sacrifices to be short, be pocketable. Uh, doesn't make those sacrifices, uh, which makes it a better lens all around, uh, but just not quite as pocketable. Um, so camera to camera. Um, the gist of it for me is, as you if you followed my website or my reviews on YouTube, uh, you'll know I had an Olympus OMD. Um, which is a camera I liked but didn't love. Um, basically, I didn't like the size and shape of it. I don't like the viewfinder hump. Um, I don't use a viewfinder that much, and it just made it so it didn't fit in the Pelican case I take on the boat with me in the summer, um, and it was just a little big for me. Um, it was built well. The image quality is fantastic. It's camera of the year on multiple, multiple websites. Um, it just wasn't my cup of tea in terms of the 35 millimeter SLR styling of it and size of it in terms of taking it places. Uh, for me, these cameras are my small camera that goes everywhere with me. If I want an SLR, I have an SLR. I'm shooting this video with it. It's my 5D Mark III. It's my work camera. I want to get as far away from that camera as I can when I'm with my family, so I want small. Um, so, let's just walk through these two cameras really quick and the big differences. Um, the first one is the physicality of them. Um, and the GX one's a little bigger. It's built like a rock. It's fantastic. The o or the EPM two is built like a plastic McDonald's toy. Not built well at all. Um, the grip on the back is in the wrong spot. It's not sticky rubber. It's slippery. Um, there's a little tiny lip on it, but it's it, this is really hard to hold. Um, when you look at the fronts of the camera, your fingers are in here or one down like this and one up here. Um, doesn't work well. This has this lovely, soft, sticky rubber grip. When you stick, if you look underneath, it pinches between your, the lens, your finger, and the rubber. It works fantastically. There's then a little bump here, which is where your dial is, that your thumb just rests on. It works very, very, very well. Um, the buttons on this are damn near impossible to read in these four here. Yes, you learn what does what, so it's not terrible, but at first it's very, very hard to read them. Um, maybe you can see that as I tilt them here a bit. Um, they both have touch screens, which I have turned off because it's annoying for me to constantly have things happen when I touch them. Um, mostly for me, and I could turn off touch shutter, but it's when you press it, pulling it out of a pocket, if they're on by mistake, you'll take a picture, um, which happens enough I've turned them off. Um, but yeah, built like a toy, very hard to grip. Built phenomenally, very easy to grip. Um, another thing real quick on body design is they both have hot shoe covers because these are smart shoes for their accessories. This has a nice little lock. It locks in place. You won't lose it. This falls out on a whim. You will lose it. Take it and put it in a box when you get the camera so you don't lose it and just put in something cheap and replaceable. Um, it's just annoying. Um, but yeah, this body is really the Achilles heel of, of this camera is the design and build of the body. It's hard to hold and it feels like a toy. Um, this is designed phenomenally well. Now, going into it, if we turn them both on, I have no memory card in here, um, but what this allows you to do, um, it has a slightly better sensor. I wouldn't pick alone on the image quality. They're both fantastic. Um, Olympus's out of the camera image quality is known to be a bit better than Panasonic's, but Panasonic's is not bad at all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, frame rate, this is significantly faster. Um, this has in-camera raw processing, which I like to use uh, an iFi card to take some shots off my small cameras to my phone to use on Facebook or Instagram from time to time. Um, you can do that here. You cannot do it here. Um, <clears throat> but where, for me, these cameras pass or fail is in one simple criteria. I shoot with auto ISO. I do that because when I'm chasing my kids around taking pictures, I need 1 25th of a second, and I want the lens wide open. It's micro four-thirds, so I don't need to worry about having depth of field be too thin. 
I do want the background somewhat blurred out because we're in the house, we're out at a party, whatever it is, the background's generally busy. I wouldn't mind blurring it out a bit. Um, and also because I generally shoot in low light, I need a fast lens um, and I need to shoot it wide open. So both of these lenses are fast. I like to shoot both lenses wide open and <clears throat> I want 1 25th of a second when I do it. And because I can, I want ISO 6400. This camera gives me all those options. This camera does not. It defaults to 1 60th of a second. Um, you can see actually it's doing 1 80th right now, but that's probably because it's a bright room. There, if I step down, I'll do 1 60th. This also only goes to 3200. I can't set it, it's not an option. 3200 is just the top auto ISO setting. If I switch it over to S for shutter, and I crank that up to 1 25th, it now will shoot wide open, um, and it, it'll go down to 3200. So it works if 3200 is okay. Once I hit 3200, I then have to hit ISO, come off auto, go over here to 6400, select 6400. When I go in a brighter room, I then am stuck there because I forget, et cetera, et cetera. So on that criteria, pretty much alone, this camera wins for me, even though it's impossible to hold. Um, I just need working auto ISO. Olympus has it, Fuji has it. Panasonic does not, Sony does not. Um, but now, just to show you shot-to-shot -shot performance, I've taken uh, replays off. So this won't have a memory card, um, so you, but you can see it's equally quick. Now, one of the really cool tricks with this is you wanna delete images, you hit playback, you just tap delete, boom, they're gone. No, oh, are you sure? It just deletes them. So you hit play again, hit delete again, oh, deleted, oh, deleted. Um, nice and fast. Now, um, so that's fantastic. The autofocus on both cameras is very similar with the same lens. Um, the 20 millimeter lens here is significantly slower than that. Um, so you have to bear that in mind. Um, but so that's, in a nutshell, this body wins as bad as it is, it wins on auto ISO alone. Now, the other really cool thing here is on the Olympus, you hit OK from the shooting screen and you get what I call a quick menu. It has all its options down here on the, on the right-hand side. As you go down, once you get to what you want, you just hit left or right to make setting adjustments. Really fast, really easy, really well done. Um, it's very similar to the OMD in that respect. Um, these guys have a quick menu. You can put things in here where you want them. Um, it works. It's not great. Um, menus, you go into the menu on either one of these. And this menu is a more professional menu in terms of it jumps into where you left off. It's not laid out very well. It's adequate. Um, it works. You can do left and right to get into these, come out and go through here. It works. <clears throat> not the best in the world, but not terrible. This, the good news is if you go into the setup menu, you get the OMDs menus, um, which are fantastic. And in the setting wheel, section you have i don't know if you can really see that because it's a little dark and the camera's a little bright but there you go you can see it there um you get all the settings from the omd in there um and when you get in there it's very easy to um, go in and change anything now even when you set this to go back to return to the same menu you were in if we hit menu now it always comes to the pasm section here you always have to hit right go into setup and then in there you'll be in where you were um, so that's annoying. You learn to deal with it, but it's annoying. Um, what they've done here is because there's no mode dials and there's very few dials on this camera, PASM are here, movie mode is there, scene mode is there, iAuto and art are there and there going across. So they've, they've always made that be the menu you end up on, no matter what. So that's a little frustrating. Also with this camera, by default, this back wheel is turned off, which means you can't even change your aperture in aperture variable mode. You can't do it. <laughs> um, you have, it's just very, uh, it's counterintuitive. They want you to use this like a point and shoot and they're trying to protect those customers. Um, so it makes it difficult. Now, like I've said, this body wins because of its auto ISO, um, but, in general, it's actually made pushed me from micro four thirds because I want this body with this logic and this sensor. I just want Olympus to make a nice small body. Now, yes, there's the EPL, which has the flip up LCD. I don't need that complexity. I also think that's an even worse body in terms of its looks. Um, 
and it's not built any better. I saw it at the trade show. So I wasn't willing to spend an extra $100 for the tilt screen and it's really not any better. Same menus, same plasticky design. The grip isn't really any better. The only difference is the grip is interchangeable there, but there's you change the color, not the function. Um, I've talked to Really Right Stuff and a few other people and no one is supporting this camera with accessory grips. So there's no help there. If there was, it might be the winner for me in terms of what I'm keeping. And when I say that, I'm comparing these two cameras. This body wins in this comparison. I have chosen for myself an X100S um, over these two. So that's my decision. Um, but between these two, this body wins on logic. Um, and now let's get to the lenses. So size-wise, this wins. Diameter never really affects you in terms of carrying a lens around. This fits in your pocket significantly better even with the much larger grip. Um, but where you make it or break it with these lenses is how fast the 17 focuses. It's just bam, focus, shot, focus, shot. I mean, I'm focusing on cracks in a black table and it's doing it no problem. I can put this over here, so focus, picture, focus, picture. It's fast, it's fast and low light too. For shooting kids, this lens is amazing. Now, same camera, switch lenses. See the performance of both back to back. So I'm gonna stick that over there as a target to aim at. So it focuses, it locks, it has no problem with that. But see how much longer it takes? Now, a lot of the reviews I've read for the 17 are making the same comparison lens to lens. Um, <clears throat> and they all seem to love the image quality of the 20. Um, but the 17 Focus is faster. Now, uh, I haven't even taken the effort or the time to line them up side by side in Lightroom. Um, because for me, an in-focus image is infinitely better quality-wise than an out-of-focus image. And the 20 millimeter, I used the 20 millimeter on this body for two months or a month. And it was incredibly frustrating. As soon as the 17 came, all the frustrations of focus went out the window. This body with that lens focuses fantastically. The auto ISO works fantastically. Um, it really is a sweetheart pairing. So for me, the, the auto focus performance alone makes the 17 win. It might not be perfectly sharp. It might have some chromic aberration. Yes, it costs a little bit more. Yes, it's a little bigger, but it focuses. To me, in-focus images are the first judge, which means this body wins um, in terms of having auto ISO because if you shoot at 1 60th, images are blurry. That lens wins because it focuses faster. So for me, as much as I love this GX1 body's shape, um, and I've tried to use it in manual modes, and I'm, I'm sorry, but when I shoot pictures of my kids, I'm lazy. Um, I'll say it. Um, this focuses better, this has better auto ISO, um, and it just wins. Um, the real question for me, and I'm really struggling for it, um, so for in terms of this review, this setup wins. It just does. I wish it had this grip. I've literally looked at t peeling this off of here and gluing it on there. Um, having someone make something for me here that maybe you yeah, attach to the bottom somehow, taking it to a CNC machine shop and having a, a similar to a really right stuff grip made. I've looked at all that. It's not really a feasible option. Um, so for me, of this pair, this wins. For me, for an ideal camera, this is the decision I'm trying to make. This autofocus is terrible. <laughs> it's about the same as this, to be honest, um, with the newest firmware. But what's got me thinking about an X100 is actually the X100S. So for me, for my family camera, it's coming down to this decision. Um, but in Micro Four Thirds land, this is the winner for me. Um, it just works. Uh, it gets out of the way. The only negative to this setup is the feeling of the body. Um, it does raw processing. It has easy delete. Um, it's very quick to respond. It has great out of the camera colors. It has wonderful auto ISO. That just makes sense. And this lens is ridiculously fast. It then has snap focus, which is great. One thing I, I have noticed though is that's not physically moving the parts of the lens. Um, you snap it and do that, and if you watch in the back of the screen, see how I can turn it a little faster than it can actually move? I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the video. But you turn it, and then it focuses. 
And it, so it's, that's driving an electric stepping motor inside the lens. Doesn't really affect the reason why that's a fantastic option at all. It's just something worth knowing. I thought it was a mechanical, uh, a, f a physical mechanical focusing dial. It is not. Um, doesn't really affect my decision, uh, but worth noting. Uh, yeah, so anyway, the Panasonic GX1 with its 20 millimeter versus the EPM2 with its 17 millimeter, obviously the lenses are interchangeable. Um, no doubt this lens wins for me. Even if I went with the GX1, this lens wins for me. It's slightly bigger, but worth it for the autofocus for me. Um, the snap uh, manual fu function is very nice too, because sometimes when you want to do like a, a close-up macro type shot, it's very nice to be able to just snap to the macro mode, put it in a minimum focus distance, and then move the camera. Um, but regardless, the focus speed on this wins, the auto ISO on this wins for me. I really wish Olympus would give us a body like this though. Great grip, great functions, um, built really well, but not in the OMD size. Uh, maybe they will someday uh, with an EP5. Uh, but for now, this would be my Micro Four Thirds setup choice, uh, for better or worse. Uh, so this is Ben Jacobson for Ben Jacobson Photo with a Panasonic EPM2 with its 17mm 1.8 review and comparison to the Panasonic GX1 with the 20mm 1.7. Uh, so hopefully this helps you make your decision. Uh, and thanks for watching.